calling all business owners on Instagram. There is absolutely no getting away from it. People on social media want to learn all about you. Yes, you. Have you noticed, especially on Instagram, that if you post a selfie, it gets a lot more engagement? So what happens if you can't go out and get professional headshots done or a professional branding session done because of the lockdown? You might have to do it yourself. In this video, I'll give you some ideas on how to get some creative selfies that can be taken with just your phone or with a camera with a self timer. And then at the end of the video, I will give you a quick list of things to think about when you are taking a selfie at home. Hello, I'm Jenny. I am a wedding photographer and a family portrait photographer based in Winchester in the UK. I have also done a few branding sessions with a few small businesses in my local area. And I have taken part in a lot of photo sessions with quite a few of the wedding suppliers in my area as well. For example, here, 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 and here. In those examples and also in a few more coming up here, you'll see that I use a lot of props and these are usually things that are created by the wedding supplier or by the small business themselves, or it could be things like their tools. Uh, to make things a little bit more interesting as well, you could also take props that refer to your own hobbies. So that gives your audience and your followers a bit more information, kind of behind the scenes look about yourself. So go and gather those or go and get a notebook and a pen and come back here and let's get started. Actually, before you do that, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when my next video comes up. I usually do videos about photography tips, wedding planning tips, and also the occasional camera gear chit chat. So actually that was my very first tip is to use props to give context to what you do as a business and use props to tell people who you are and what you stand for and you know your hobbies, a little bit of a look behind the scenes as well because people, your followers on social media like to find out more about you. If you're a photographer like me, it's easy to shove a camera in front of your face like this um, actually, this photo was taken for my last YouTube video before this one. Um, we'll link it here. And if you have watched that, you'll know that I was desperate to take photos of the cherry blossom. And that kind of tells you a little bit more about me and my love for flowers and nature. So anything that you're putting out on social media can be a reflection back on who you are and what you stand for as a business or as a person. So if I were to take another selfie for Instagram, I might do this. This photo has a few of my favorite things and then in the caption, I might talk about those. Now, if I didn't want my face in there, all I would do is to stand up like this. I've also changed my top in there, um, if you've noticed that, to stand out a little bit more. And these two photos were actually shot on my phone. Now I do have some other ideas for other businesses um, using the props that I have here. So I will talk you through that. Say if I were a gardener or a plant shop owner, I might do this. Now, if I was a baker or a cake maker, a wedding cake maker, I would absolutely take a photo of myself with a piece of cake in front of my face. And maybe I would um, talk about my favorite cake. Now, I know that wedding cake makers often have sample wedding cakes. So if I was a wedding cake maker, then I would absolutely line up um, all my cakes and then go in the middle and take a photo that way. So I could even layer them so that I've got you know, a few kind of cakes at the front and sort of um, a few cakes in the middle and then a cake, the bigger cakes at the back and then me in the center. Now I did actually take some photos of a tea blender a little while ago. That's um, Uma from Miss T Smith and Sarah who has a local pottery business. They had a joint branding session because then we could set up an afternoon tea scenario and I took photos of both of their wares. Maybe you can do something like that, set up a sort of afternoon tea scenario and uh, you can set up a sort of tea for one and take several photos of that scenario, then you can have several photos to post on Instagram. 
Now I had a really good idea for a hairdresser. I've seen a lot of my hairdresser friends post on social media warning people not to DIY at home. And so I wanted to do a sort of moody, sad, a little bit creepy, scary kind of photo. So this was taken in the shower again with my phone. I wanted wet hair and water droplets on the screen. So I wet the shower screen, stepped behind it and held my camera on the other side of the shower screen and the scissors in one hand. I would choose one of these photos and then in the caption I'd maybe say, don't cut your own hair or something like that. Or I'm a hairdresser and even I won't cut my own hair. Or maybe if you really must cut your own hair and then you can give tips. I, I don't know what they would be because I'm not a hairdresser. And then going with the dark and moody theme, I thought I would do something for a DJ or uh, a performer or something like that. And I came out with this photo. So if you have any quirky or unusual ideas about how to take interesting selfies, do please comment down below. Or if you're looking for some ideas, comment down below as well and I'll try to help out and maybe other people in the community would try to help out too. And we could have a brainstorm in the comments section down below. Okay, so the main things to think about when you are taking a selfie are, tip number one, use props that are relevant to you to say something about yourself. And if you don't like your face in the selfie, do use just parts of you in the selfie. That's fine as well. My second tip is about lighting. Having good light for photos is crucial, especially if you are using a phone camera. So in my selfies behind the table, that's kind of fairly standard lighting. I was using the window light, um, which you can see it's sort of coming in from this angle, but I did also use a reflector for the other side um, so that my other side wasn't gonna be too much in the shadows. And that created kind of fairly even lighting. Now I could have moved the table to so that it was face on to the window so that I would have got a, a very even lighting but then that would have meant actually moving quite a lot of furniture around so I didn't do that but maybe you would be able to actually move in front of a window and have even lighting. But to be more creative, you can also be more creative with lighting. As I said in my original video about 10 photo challenges you can do at home in that one, I will link it up there. That actually mentions one light, a one light challenge. Now that could be window light or it could be something like the tie used in the shower, the hairdressing photo. And that is me kind of using a single light source and I basically basically taped uh, two kind of opaque colored paper. One was blue and one was red and I kind of stuck it in front of the light so that I could have a kind of moody lighting, different colored lighting, put that in the shower tray. So that was one my one source of light. Um, and then in the DJ type shot, I actually use my TV and I put a kind of neon lighting kind of dark scene. Sorry, there's just a bird outside just getting distracted. So for the DJ video, neon city type photo on the screen and I kind of position myself against that so that you could see the reflection of that. My third tip is actually be mindful of your camera angle and um, where you're taking the photo from. Now, in most of the photos that I've shown you, they have been at eye level or directly head on to kind of the subject, wherever I'm taking a photo of, or in the case of selfies, in case of actually uh, your face in the screen, I've taken it slightly higher up. That's because it kind of makes me look up. It, it elongates your neck. It's generally a more flattering angle to take you know, face selfies from. But you can absolutely use the angle. You can use a lower down angle to make really creative photos. But that is going to be for another video because there's a lot of information that you can actually talk about with you know angles and where to put the camera. So I will do another video on that if you want me to. And my last tip and probably most important one is have fun. Try things out, go around your house, you know, find different props and find interesting ways to use them. It might not always work, but that's fine. You know, move on to something else. Just 
give it a go and have fun. Now, to be honest, these are just starting off ideas for you to uh, maybe go off and think of your own setups. And it's a good thing to do if you are vaguely interested in photography. Obviously, if you're not and this kind of thing stresses you out, then I would absolutely not do it. I think the important thing in, on social media is being authentic and keeping in touch and just posting when you can. And I would absolutely not put any pressure on myself to take wacky, fun, really ultra creative photos at all if I wasn't feeling like it. I would do it if I had the time and the inclination to do it, but if not, then don't worry about it. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye for now. Please like this video if you did, and also do please subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out my small channel, so thank you. I'll see you again next time. Bye.